In my previous video in my series on testing and charging batteries, I talked about this new generation of battery chargers and how impressed I was with it and how to use one and what it can actually do in some cases to old and tired batteries. In this video, I want to talk about some of the new generation of battery testers. Now, those of you who have been around old cars, and I've been around old cars for over 50 years, uh, batteries can drive you nuts because sometimes you can do normal testing on them and you would swear that they appear to be okay and then all of a sudden a week later you go out to start the car and ramp, ramp. we've all heard that sound before or, or worse worse yet your wife calls up she's trying to leave work and she's saying oh, the battery's dead and you have to run off and save her so I'm sure some of you are chuckling and say, yeah, Ken, I know what you're talking about. Well, something happened today right here in the shop that is an like absolute classic example of this. And I just wanted to show you this. This is my 1979 W116 300SD. Has the large you know, diesel battery in it. But lately I've noticed if I let the car sit, that the battery kind of grunts and groans. It'll start the car as long as I'm driving the car regularly, but man, let it sit for a week and you think, what, what, I got a battery drain in this thing or not? So I decided to put this battery to the test. Let's just see how good this battery really is. So I brought out all my testers, the testers I've used in the past and the new tester I use now. First off, I have the good old load tester. You hook this up to the battery, hit the button, and put a load on the battery. And you watch the gauge to just see how much the battery can handle when it's under load. Okay, that's a load tester. Then you have the typical volt ohm meter. Now, that will tell you the total voltage of the battery. Now, many of us have been fooled by using a volt ohm meter to think that okay, it's showing 12.5 volts, therefore my battery's good, and off you go buying a new alternator to do, or checking your regulator or something else. In the end, it has, it ends up being the battery because this isn't going to cut it, okay? The voltometer uh, just doesn't cut. Then I have the trusty old battery hydrometer, which has been around for years and years and years to measure the actual fluid, the health of the fluid in the battery. So. You know, we can use a hydrometer. And then we have the new tester. Look at the size of this thing. This is called a conductance tester. And as we get into the testing of this battery, I'll actually explain a little bit more in detail what that means. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to start out and go through each one of these testers together with you. We'll show you what the readings are up close so you can see me in the actual testing process. One word of caution here though, I want to talk a little bit about safety. Anytime you're messing around with a battery, doing this type of testing, you should always wear a face shield. I know it doesn't, it's not that easy to film with a face shield on, but I will put this face shield on and we'll move this camera right in close here and I'll walk you through each one of the tests and then we can talk about the results together. I want to begin by showing you the volt ohm meter. Um, this is going to just give us a test of the voltage in the battery as it sits right now. Turning this meter on to volts, we'll put the black lead on negative and the red lead on positive. And let's see what we get. Look at that, 13.16 volts. Now, if you've been around batteries, that's pretty good. Usually it's about 12 and a half, maybe in the high 12s. But if I'm looking at 13.16 here, I should assume that the battery is in great condition, right? Now, let's try the load tester. We'll hook the load tester up to the battery. Red to positive, black to negative. Now, looking here, you can see that the load tester is showing almost 14 volts. <laughs> Once again, look, it's almost out of the green. What's going on here? It's, it's like better than new, right? All right, now this, this little button down here will throw the load on this, and if the battery's weak, you'll see this 
needle start to drop down and it'll even drop into the yellow right there. And you want to hold this for 10 seconds or longer. So I'm going to turn the load on and we'll just hold it and see what happens. Five. Okay, 10 seconds. Look, it's still in the high green and when I release it, it comes back up. Now, if it drops way down and you release it and it doesn't come back up, that shows that the, the battery's weak. It doesn't have any oomph behind the voltage reading. But in this case, this battery has just passed the load test. Okay, we'll set the load tester aside and we'll bring in the, the hydrometer. This will require that I remove one of these plates And I'm going to take the hydrometer and stick it down in here and suck up some battery fluid. Look at that. You see that? It's reading 1250 in the green. Right there. It's right at the bottom of good. So it's not, it's not like right at the top, but it is in the acceptable range. Yeah, I'll go ahead and put the acid back into the battery. You want to be careful where you're putting this acid because it will eat through your clothes and other things as well. I usually keep that in a plastic bag once I'm done with it. Now I'm going to go ahead and put the cap back on and seal it in place. Okay, now enter the new conductance tester. This is a Solar battery tester. It's lightweight, it has two clamps, negative, positive, and three buttons. It has an enter button and an up and down button. So it's a little bit more difficult to use than a load tester. But if you can use a cell phone, you can use these type of conductance testers. Now, the most important thing when using this tester is you have to know the capacity of your battery. Now, this battery still has a tag on it. If you've lost the tag and you don't know, you may have a difficult time getting an accurate reading. But I'm looking at this interstate here, and it's telling me it is rated at 750 cold cranking amps or 940 cranking amps. Okay, that's important. You need to know that to use this type of tester. So hooking it up is very simple. Just hook the red clamp to the positive and the black clamp to the negative post of the battery. And the first thing that is going to come up is the voltage of the battery. Note that the voltage on this battery is still over 13 volts, even though I've just done a load test. So, you, you know, I'm thinking, okay, this battery is in good shape, right? Well, let's find out. So, in using this tester, once you, once you get the reading on the voltage, you push enter to select the type of battery. And there's a code, usually on most of these testers, there's a code on the back that tells you what the numbers mean, what type of battery. In this case, you have standard batteries, you have spiral round, round AGM batteries, you have gel cell battery option. So you have three or four options of different types of batteries and you need to select the proper battery before you continue with the test. So in this case, the SL1 is a standard battery. This is a standard flooded battery with acid in it. So once I've selected that, I press enter. And now that CA means, okay, I can select either CA or if I push the button here, I can select either CCA or cold cranking amps. So I'm going to I'm going to go back and I'm going to select CA. And then I'll press enter. And look at that. Up comes 1000. But this is 940, so using these up and down arrows, I'm going to lower the setting to 940, oops, 940, okay? So I've got 940 CA set on my tester. Now I'm going to give it the test by pushing the enter button. And this sends it a charge to the battery to test the conductance of the plate. So let's see what happens. Press enter. The test begins and it ends very quickly. Look at that. 599 
cranking amps in this battery and it's telling me this is rated at 940. Notice the red button there, it's telling me this battery has failed. Can you believe that? Even though it passed the load test, it passed the meter test, it passed the hydrometer test, when I put it to this test, it's telling me that this battery's capacity is only at 600 cranking amps when it should be at 940. So you can see from this test that my battery here can hold a surface charge. That's not the problem. But boy, when, it, when you have to put it to the test, let's just say it doesn't have any horsepower. Maybe the filter's plugged a little bit for you diesel owners. So the conductance test is really measuring how well those, the health of those plates are in the battery and how they can get the flow of current moving through the battery, so to speak, in layman's terms. So I just love these new little testers. I've been able to really get a handle. You know, I have so many cars that I, battery maintenance and battery charging is a constant challenge. So between the new smart chargers and this new tester here, it's kind of revolutionized the way I maintain my own fleet of batteries. Now, just as a final little test, I want to show you what this looks like when you put it to a new battery. This Bosch battery here is only about six months old, and I just pulled it out of a car that has been sitting for about two and a half weeks. So it has not been recently charged. So in conclusion, let's check this battery out. Okay, first off, let's check out this uh, Bosch battery. The CCA rating is 850 and the CA rating is 1000. Uh, once again, you need to know that for the, using this tester. And we'll hook up the black to negative and the red to positive here. It's gonna be a quick test. Look at that, 12.6. So uh, this battery is reading lower than the battery in my 300 SD. Remember my, my 300 SD battery was reading over 13 volts. So does that mean my 300 SD battery is better? Well, let's find out. Press enter, select a standard flooded battery. Press enter again. Okay, we want cranking amps, one set it at 1000. Okay, let's take it up a little bit. We'll take that right up to 1000. Uh, it's being a little sensitive. There we go. Now let's press enter for the test. There we go. Look at that. 962 as opposed to 1000. So this, this battery is at 95% where the other battery in my 300 SD was probably around 65%. So that gives you a good indication that I can, I, can plan, I can plan on this Bosch battery delivering for me. So I hope you found that helpful. I highly recommend you get one of these new style testers.